went back to Percy the small engine and friends. Hello, Percy, sweet. <laughs> Tasman showed off for many years, and he knows his life is a bit great in it. Some years ago, when he first, when he was first made, he had some tough time of trying to hide away from an uneducated person named Dr. Bourbon Beachy, who was a man of hatred. He was born on the wrong time of year, so when the age of steam was fading, he decided to move, and that's when he had new life to start with. He had his worries about what might happen to him in the years, as the years passed. He met Percy who told him.
you won't have trouble like when we haven't what's worrying you well dr bourbon beachy is dead it's Tony Abbott I'm worried about. I met him when he was my controller. It was before he became Prime Minister. Oh, that's who you're worried about. But he's not visiting us anymore these days. I hope you're right. Stuart went to bed in the dark shed. One morning, Stuart arrived in Tasmania. It was before Tasman Sodor was born. He had a railway to run after he asked permission from a controller who was in charge, but he, had, he didn't know what that things were about to change. When he was ready to do his first day's work, his first controller died, and a new one was hired. His name was Tony Abbott, and for once in his life, he never had been in charge of a railway. Your steward, I suppose, he said. Yes. I am. And you must be Tony Abbott. That's right. I'm to make sure you get the jobs done, but can you tell me where did you come from? And how did you get here? Stuart didn't want his secret life to be spoiled, so he made a lie. I came here by boat. Oh, that was bobbing up and down. Yeah, I enjoyed it. He was trying not to sound too nervous to let him know he came here in secret. As Tony had left, Stuart went to work. At first it was very well, but when his records were recorded, he was worried as he went to bed. next day was the time for him to escape. He didn't like Tony being controller, and worst of all, the Liberals were in charge of this railway. His lie had to be kept a secret, even when his records were recorded. In his quiet panic, he looked for a place to hide. Oh dear. He thought the Liberals were in charge of this place. My first controller didn't tell me this was to change. It's not mental when I first moved. He was a magic engine and he decided to do the work of taking the stone to the docks.
But as he was heading to the quarry, he was starting to feel thirsty. He looked around desperately for water. He found a water tower. He took a drink from it and felt a lot better. So he went to find a truck. While he was taking the stone, Tony and his members were talking about Stuart. Stuart says he claims to come from England. There's no record of Stuart coming here by boat, sir. He came here without planning. What? Then he must be here for some odd reasons. The liberals decided to find Stuart to tell him he came here for no reason. Stuart, meanwhile, was connecting the stone. He was enjoying this, taking the load from the harbour. Ah, oh, this is wonderful, he thought. After the stone was delivered and he was on his way back to the quarry, when he suddenly saw the Liberals, they were coming towards him as if for wanting to tell him something. Stuart, you've come here for no reason. What is your business of coming here? We've read your records saying you were made and did some work in England. But there were no records of you coming here. <laughs> if you're wanting me to go back to England, then you'll have to get me, he snapped. He steamed off to the quarry. That engine must be stopped, said Turner, who was angry and wet. Stuart came to the same quarry. He looked round desperately for hiding place. He had to keep his life a secret so the liberals wouldn't send him back. Even if he told them about Dr. Beeching trying to scrap him, he knew they wouldn't believe him or listen to him. What a terrible life he was having. He rounded a bend. Then another and a third. He came to the mine. This was the only hiding spot he could think of. My life is a nightmare. He moaned. I'd rather hide in the bush, he said, than meet another, meet a control I don't know. He heard police cars coming to the quarry. The liberals had called them. His time in life was running out. He had to hide in the mine far inside so he wouldn't get found. Quickly, he used some bushes and covered the entrance just in time. The police and the liberals came at the right time to find no sign of Stuart. 
Where is that engine? Oh, what's the use, guys? This railway is useless. We'll have to curse it seems as he's disappeared. We'll find him, sir, brother, said the police officers. So the liberals left, but the police were staying at the quarry to look out for Stuart. In the mine, Stuart was peeping to see if the coast was clear. He saw the police were patrolling every quarry. He kept living quiet and was hoping they wouldn't find him in his hiding place. There's no sign of him said one of the police officers. We'd better tell base we lost them. We lost him. So, they left. Stuart heard the car leave. Then he peeped out. Oh God, they're gone. I better find another way, another railway to live in. So he left to find another railway. Night came, and he was chuffing on the main line. He liked his peaceful journey, and he listened to his radio. When he did, he had a sudden thought, which wasn't good. I hope Tony never doesn't hunt me down. I can't abide going back to England. He heard his radio say some news report about Tony Shock, what was happening at the quarry. Something has escaped. The police are hunting it down. He knew who it was talking about. It was talking about him. Oh no, I'm in trouble again. He thought sadly. He saw the junction ahead him turned to the left. This line led him to some place he'd never been to. He saw the sign. It said, Sloping Main. Hmm, I might hide in it and stay in it for a few days till someone can find me. I've had enough of anyone after me. He arrived at the seaside place and a shed was waiting for him. He went in it just in time. He shut the doors and waited for Tony Abbott and his members of the police to find him. Mm, the engine's got to be here somewhere. Stuart is starting to get so far. Wait till we get him. They looked round and searched the shed. Stuart heard their footsteps coming to the door. He was feeling a bit stressed and the voices were buzzing in his head. 
I am Dr. Bourbon Beeching and your steward to do the work, but once you do it well, I might give you a chance of working here for years to come. No, Dr. Beecher, I'm sorry, but I'm a learner and I don't get told from someone that doesn't care for an engine that is too young for the world, world of hatred. You'll be sent back to England if you don't tell us why you came here, for what reason. Listening to the voices got him a bit angry. I'm to end this madness. I'm sending them back where they work. He came bursting out of the shed. His smoke lurked out from his funnel and grabbed Tony and his members, even the police. You not want to know why I'm here? Well, I'll tell you, but you're not to send me back to England. I'm a learner engine. I was born at the wrong time. You not want to make my life a nightmare. As for you, Turner, you complete nincompoop, an idiot. You're not to become my controller. This is my warning, and it will be stressful for you as it is for me. And he fried his hand. <gasps> That's what you get for trying to make my life a nightmare. Don't ever meet me again. All of you are cowards to sort me out. With a flash, he sent them away. Thank goodness I can get them to leave me alone the hard way. Suddenly, he woke up. He found himself back in his safe place. Percy had woken him up. When he heard him wake talk, what happened, Stuart? asked Percy. I had a dream I was in a railway, but Turner Abbott was making my life a nightmare. I remember some time when I came to your dock in Sloping Main. Oh, what did you do here? I was... I sent Tony and his members and the police back to where they worked. And that's when I threatened him with my warning. I fried his hand. Well, it's all over your dream. And I'm sure Tony won't hunt you down like I said, he can't visit Tasman Sobor for many years to come. Stuart heaved a sigh beneath at his sleep. But he still, he was still thinking about what Tony would be doing if he would ever visit Tasman Sobor again. He still remembered his threat warning, which was frying his hand. I hope he's forgotten, he told himself. Thank you.